Hi, I'm Aaron and this is Exploring Elixir. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at clustering with Elixir. So when I first started getting involved with Beam languages myself, the idea of being able to just spin up a bunch of VMs and have them all connect to each other and then you can just pass messages between them seemed like complete magic. And to be honest, it wasn't really clear how to set this up, how to manage it, or even how it worked. So we're going to take a look here at kind of how this all gets put together. So we're all used to running our uh, Elixir applications like this during development, IEX-S Mix. And this is just a way to launch an Elixir app. And this starts, of course, the Beam VM. Now, if we go ahead and give the VM a name or the node a name, we can do this with a dash dash S name command line option, or we can do it with name. The difference being that with name, we have to provide a fully qualified name. So that would include some sort of host name, uh, or IP address along with it. But we're just going to use short names. Um, it's good enough when we're doing it on a local machine. Um, when we do this, it's, it tells the VM to automatically start a small daemon in the background called EPMD, which is the airline port mapper daemon. And what this guy does is he just sits there and waits for VMs to tell them, hey, I'm here, and this is the name I'm, I, I have, and this is the port I'm listening on. So if we query EPMD right now, it's running, and it's on port 4369, and you can kill it actually as well, and we can see that it, we can't connect to it anymore. It's not there, but as soon as we start one uh, VM with a node name, it's going to automatically start again. And as we can see, it already sees our node there, name node one, it's listening at port 42,671. None of this is configured. This is all just, you know, zero configuration, auto magic kind of stuff. So the different VMs use their EPMDs locally and across the network to find each other. And when they find each other, they can then connect to each other. Um, and this is quite easy as well. So let's spin up a second node. And we're going to connect one to the other. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to monitor uh, for nodes coming and going. So I've got a little monitor command here or function. And what it does is it uses the net kernel module from Erlang uh, and it calls monitor nodes true. And what this does is it just tells the, the beam that whenever a uh, node event happens, so when a node joins the cluster or leaves the cluster, let us know, send us a message. Um, and then there's a monitor cluster, which is just a little receive loop. And it's going to receive node up and node down uh, messages. So let's start that. On both of these. And it says, okay, we have no uh, nodes that are connected to us so that we can see we are alone and and getting the list of nodes is is equally easy so you can do this using the uh, node module in elixir node.list will display all visible nodes but there's also the idea of hidden nodes where you can have nodes that are connected to not the whole cluster but just one specific uh, node in it and they they don't show up uh, by default when you just do a query for all the names so we've got our two VMs now. We're monitoring them. We're able to list nodes. Um, and if we look again at EPMD and ask for its names, EPMD is aware of both of our nodes. And again, you can see they look there uh, on different ports, listening uh, on different ports there. So we can simply ping one node from the other. And that action alone will actually cause them to come together and cluster. So we're simply going to call uh, ping, which is um, as we can see here, it's part of the, again, the node module in Elixir. We're going to call ping. We're going to give it the uh, name of the other nodes. There's node to it localhost. And we can see immediately that we got a node joined event, which is great. Um, and on the other node, we also got a node joined event and they can both see each other now. And that's it. That's all there is to, uh, to clustering. And if we add a third node here, uh, we won't bother monitoring. We'll just ping node and let's ping uh, node two again. Oh. We get our pong back. And again, on both of the other nodes, we see that there is a node that has joined. And if on node three here, 
we ask for visible nodes, we can again see node one, two, and our cells, of course, three. So now they're connected in a three-way mesh. So this is like really simple and very straightforward. Now there's a few downsides to using EPMD in this way, um, which I'll actually cover in the extra episode in a couple of days. Um, it has to do with some scalability limits and security, but we'll go into those details in another um, episode here. For now though, you may be looking at this going, well, that's really cool, but how do I know what the other nodes are, are called and how do I manage this? And typically the way this is done is you set up in your application configuration, the fact that you have a node one and node two and a node three and what host they're on. And you, you just put this in the configuration and then they can connect uh, to at least one other node. Uh, maybe you tell each node about one other one and then you can build up your cluster this way. But it really does kind of require some foreknowledge of where your nodes are and where they're going to be. And this doesn't always map to how we deploy these days. We may be deploying very dynamically using Kubernetes. Um, we might be on a cloud environment, we might be on EC2 um, or similar. So we may not know in advance what our nodes are called and we may not want to know. So how can we get around that, that limitation, kind of remove that last barrier and make it completely magic and just have uh, nodes that are available to us? as soon as they appear. So we'll get out of all of our nodes here. And we'll start from scratch again. Um, we're gonna be using a library called libcluster. And this is a great little library. It simply um, asks something on the network for the nodes to be, when the nodes are there or when they're not. And it has different, uh, several different backend strategies. And we'll take a look at one here. So I've got the configuration uh, for it, um, for this uh, application anyways here. And you set up what are called topologies and this just ex describes how you're going to get lists of nodes um, essentially. Um, and the strategy I've used is gossip. So this is a UDP based protocol and just as the basic gossip protocol, but there's also several other ones supported. Um, you can use Kubernetes with this. Uh, there's an EC2 module available. There's a pull request in a fork repository or from a fork repository of libcluster that implements DNS based discovery, service discovery. So there's several different ways of finding your nodes. Um, and then you can optionally provide connect, disconnect, list node uh, functions as well as to find some customization of the child spec, which we don't really need to do. For um, Kubernetes and EC2, you obviously will need to tell it a bit about your um, accounts or where the Kubernetes is and how to query it. And that's what the config is for. For the UDP gossip, this is good enough for a local uh, network where they're all in the same kind of network segment. Um, we don't have to do any configuration. So it's like truly magic. Um, we You don't have to, like I said, use the connect or disconnect um, here. You can just let it use the normal um, provided functions for this, but we've overridden these ourselves um, with a connect node and a disconnect node function, which we can see here. And so they just simply write out to um, start out here some information um, and then they call net kernel connect and net kernel disconnect, which is what it does by default if you don't provide a connect or disconnect. But this shows you can do whatever you want. You can kind of get um, information much as we did with monitoring a bit earlier. We can get information whenever libcluster detects that there is a node that should be connected or not. Um, and you can then make some decisions. Do I want to connect this node? Do I not want to connect this node? Um, and, and then take action from there. So let's see this actually in action. This is all there is, just these few lines of, of, con of configuration. Um, and then all we have to do is just make sure that libcluster is started. Now, normally this would happen for you automatically. As soon as you add it as a dependency, Elixir will also start libcluster's application. But we've I've purposely turned that off um, in my mix.exs, so I have to start it manually so we can actually see it um, in action. So let's bring up our, our nodes again. And we'll bring up our auto cluster and then we'll start the auto cluster. Let me just grab that. Great, so we can see we're monitoring again. We're seeing some heartbeats now and this is the gossip protocol in action. I'll start on the other ones and you can see that immediately they're finding each other and joining each other. And if I cut one of those, um, I, the node's departed, node two at localhost is gone, I no longer see it. If I bring it back up and restart the auto clustering, it joins again. So it's even more magic that we don't need to know the names of 
the nodes, and this is absolutely fantastic. And it's LibCluster is a great little tool to be able to build um, automate, automatic uh, building of clusters up, especially if you're using something like, as I said, Kubernetes or EC2 or um, uh, DNS service discovery. Now, there's one other little fly in the ointment potentially, and that is that we may not want to be um, sending EPMD or, or deploying EPMD with our application. We might even not be able to, depending on the platform that we're deploying to. Um, and this still, LibCluster still by default uses EPMD. It just uses what comes with the Beam. So there is also a way around that. Um, and I've got an example of it here in this dist.ex. I can't take any credit for this code. Um, it's from a really great blog on the Airline Solutions site. Um, I'll link that in the description below, but you can also see it in the uh, comment on the top of the, the source code here. <clears throat> and it simply implements a dist.service module. And then it also includes a service underscore dist, which is a little bit of magic that we're going to see in a moment. Uh, just a implementation detail. And this underscore dist actually does the listening, the select, the accept, accept connecting, setup, and close um, for instead of EPMD. Um, and then we have a client that start links, registers nodes, etc. Um, we've got a little bit of a hack in here in that it decides what port it's going to listen on based on uh, a number that we provide as part of the node name. And that's just so that we can run multiple VMs on the same host and they won't be using the same port. It's not the only way of doing it. There's other ways, but that was the way they used in the example and it's good enough for, for demo purposes. So what we need to do is we need to tell the Beam that when we start it, that we don't actually want to use uh, EPMD. In fact, we'll go kill it here. Uh, what we want instead to do, so we can say tell it by just passing in start EPMD faults. And what we need to do is tell it about our proto or uh, our proto dist, so the prototype for distribution, that's our service. Um, and then the EPMD module this is the client side of it, and that was our dist.client. And then we just start our application as you would exp as as normal. So we'll do um oh I need to give it a node name here. Let's do that. And we'll also call this one node two. And we'll call this one node three again. So we have our three nodes. We will start our auto clustering. It works just as before, but now we're not using EPMD at all. It's direct VM to VM connections with no external uh, process in the way. So the Airline and uh, the Airline Beam really provides a lot of flexibility in how we actually build, deploy, um, and work with our clusters. And you can make them truly uh, deployable and absolutely magic. So thanks for watching this. I hope that you learned a little bit about um, how to create a cluster and some of the options that are available for you uh, in doing so. Um, hit the subscribe uh, button if you'd like to see more, and we'll see you in the next episode.